Hey, I never heard how you got picked up. I always hear everybody's story about how they ended up becoming a regular. Did anything interesting happen when you got picked up? Because I've always known you as a regular. That I just saw about that. There was a time you got picked up and I were just, made a regular. We would. I went through the 10-year period, the first 10 years of my career. And I talked to, you know. How long did it take you to get picked up? We're sitting with a kid right now that's been doing comedy for a year. A, a little okay. baby, a um, high baby. And, <laughs> and uh, people are going to give him shit in about three months. You know, he's going to walk into a club. Somebody's going to whisper something to somebody's ear. And, and he's going to see it. He's going to see all the things I saw that, you know, how people will say, oh, well, he gets on stage because he's friends with Joey and Sam Tripoli. I don't believe in life that way. I believe in life and opportunities. Right. If you got up off the fucking bed in Boston and flew out here, you're in the game. That's your opportunity. If you made a friend and for some reason he put you on his TV show, so be it. The guy believed in you and we'd rather you have it than somebody else. But some people can't live with that. It drives them crazy. They always got to say something. Well, she got it because that's her father or because whatever. Whatever it was, she went to the fucking audition. Right. She went to the fucking audition. Yeah. Okay, and as we could see right now, what's the girl from Friends? Like, Jim Franz. Yeah, like oh, her father, whatever. Look at her. She's a piece of fucking ass. She's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And she could act. You know what I'm saying? She's still around 20 years later. So obviously you were fucking wrong. You were fucking wrong. You follow me? Like, well, well, they got the show because of the father. No, it's called opportunity. You got up off your ass. Kristen Lee is like that. And He's were, a super talented guy, right. you know? And you're at the right place at the right fucking spot. Yeah. That's it. So... I was very fortunate. Like, uh, people have bad luck in their life. It took me a month to get into the store. I got here January 29th, and by February 19th, I was a regular. How could, you know? But on the flip side of that, Ari auditioned how many times for her? Like, I, I, it was either 28 or 38. Okay. So, do you understand me? It really right. doesn't matter. All that is part of your journey. For me, I just happened to log out. But I didn't go to Montreal. I never got a big agent. I never had a big manager all those years. The only thing I had was the store. So it was the only thing I had. So I had to treat it a certain way because it was all I had. That was the only person who believed in me. People would come in and say, you're funny, but uh, we're not going to fucking pick him up. He's out of his fucking mind. Where Mitzi Shaw promoted my oh yeah, craziness. she, she got him. that. She loved when I threw a cue ball at a car. She loved when I broke the microphone. She loved the chaos. She loved chaos. So I was home. You follow me? So that's my story. It took me three fucking weeks. I want to thank Scott Day. I know he listens to the podcast religiously. He's in some fucking country in Bangkok because when <laughs> Doug Stanhope, it was Doug Stanhope, Carlos Mencia. And somebody else who vouched for me, but it was primarily Stanhope who vouched for me. When Stanhope vouched for me, I was at Stanhope's. I was staying on his bunk beds, and the guy called Stanhope. Uh, I can't think of his name. I just said his fucking name. Scott he, Day. Scott Day called Stanhope and said, "Tell Diaz it's gonna be six weeks, six weeks to six month waiting list." Holy shit. Do you remember the fucking Laugh Factory? Do you remember calling the Laugh Factory and going, hi, it's January 7th. This is Joey Diaz. Like to come in and showcase? That bitch told me October 24th. But the first time I called this, the Laugh Factory, like I was here like a year, and he kind of didn't know. I did a Latino night, but he didn't know for sure. I remember calling like in January, and my showcase was October 24th. Like 10 months Dude, away. we used to drive in from Vegas to do that open mic. It was so good. Where? At the, at the Laugh, Laugh Factory. Factory. You used to drive in from You and Scott Ross? Me, Scott Ross, and uh, Keith Healy, and Mark Hatchell. Used to drive in to do it. Where is Joel Lindley? I don't know. Where is Mimi Gonzalez? Where is Mimi Gonzalez? You remember Mimi Gonzalez? Yes. Pretty lesbian, Cuban, half-Jewish. Where are, there's so many people, I wonder where they, they are. Just, I bumped into Mimi Gonzalez. I was going to try to fucking track it into Montreal one time. 
I talked to Bobby Slade, and he goes, if you get to Montreal, I'll throw you a five-minute stop spot at the comedy on the Dirty Show. And I had my money. This was before 9-11. And I made it all the way to Detroit. And I get out of the airport, and I go, wait a second. I'm going to go to Canada and walk around like that fucking guy I hate at the store. You know, when you have spots at the store, and there's always that one guy that's not a regular. Yeah. But he lurks, and he's creepy. Yeah. I was like, am I going to be that fucking guy? I'm not going to Montreal and going to walk around and wait for a five-minute guest set. I can't do that to my friends. I said, fuck it. And I just got a room. I, I told the cab driver to take me to the cheapest room. And he took me to the darkest neighborhood you ever seen in your fucking life in Detroit. And I had a rock, a Coke rock with me because I was coming from Miami. So I had a Coke rock. And I thought in my mind I was going to sneak it into, that's how retarded I was, Tripoli. I was going to sneak it into Montreal. And I went to Detroit. I was going to try to take the bus over the border. I was like, fuck this. And I checked into this fucking hotel where you got to put a couch in front of it. The door, because, I mean, that, yeah, man. Hey, I had 300 bucks. And this was 2995. Take your own chances. HBO. <laughs> it was warm. Or, or whatever the fuck it was. It was, uh, yeah, it was warm, whatever. And I'll never forget that the, the second night, there was a club down the corner called Coco's. Comedy club, pure black club, tremendous, tremendous. I didn't know. Detroit had another black club called All, J All Jokes Aside. In 1995, there was two black clubs in the country that were hiring Latinos. All Jokes Aside in Chicago and All Jokes Aside in Detroit. I was doing Joey's Comedy Club one time in, in Dearborn and like a Gavone. I called those jokes aside. I was featuring at Joey's. I'm like a guy oh. the pig that I am. This is why I tell people to mind their business because I've learned these lessons. Right. When I tell people not to do this and you do it, I'm not telling you because I'm being a dick. I'm telling you because this is the lesson. That's why I've you're learned. supposed to experience this. This is how you're. That's what you go through. Right. I, but I could save you the aggravation. Right, right. Because I wouldn't want to experience this ever again. So you're at one club getting paid. Whatever you're getting paid, fifty dollars a set, right? Seventy five dollars a set to feature in those days, and between the shows, you know, because you're a feature, so you you're off stage at eight thirty. The other show starts at eight thirty, so you have to get in your car and drive to the other, and then be back for the ten thirty show to feature. Oh my god! So me being the pig that I am, I called all jokes aside. Didn't know my way around Detroit. You know, who knows nothing? This right. Why mind your business? Right. You know, this town now. Yeah, but the girl will tell Forget the fucking girl. Forget the girl in the fucking ate the GPS. I ain't going nowhere. You're just driving around Detroit. So I'm driving around Detroit, downtown Detroit at 7th. Coked like out of your mind? No, 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 no. I had two comedy shows. I was straight as an arrow. I was showcasing at all jokes aside. So why would you set up a fucking showcase if you're working at the other club? Unless... The other club doesn't have a Sunday night, and your Sunday's open. Then you get a hotel room, you stay at the condo, and you showcase. That's what you do. I went against protocol. I got the showcase on a Saturday night. <clears throat> so I already ate a bag of dicks at Joey's. So here I am driving around the trailer on nothing. I, I finally get there, 20 to park, you know. Yeah. Because you ain't going to drive around for two hours. Right. You, you got a shirt on. You get in, look, get out. You're showcasing. You got to look good. So I had to like valet the fucking car, run in, and it was like 70s night. It was like a black 70s retro night. Oh my God. And everybody was dynamite. Everybody was cool. Like as soon as I walked in, the lore, you know, like the nice jackets, people were dancing. Then they're like, let's get this comedy club started. And they had the whole thing. The, they had the DJ. And I mean, it was a great little club. And I don't know who I worked with. I don't, can't even tell you. All I know is I went up there and just made a fucking asshole out of myself. You bombed? With. And I, I bombed with an Arab on my back. Okay, so take a, take a fucking terrorist, put a bomb on him, and then put him on my shoulders. That's how bad I fucking bombed. Because I was all fucked yeah, up. Yeah, because you tribe. were just running in. You didn't get a chance no, to set. No, you didn't compose. And you don't think about Everybody that. Everybody wanted to talk to you. you yeah, yeah, living, yeah. Was that living in L.A. then? No, 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 no. I was still in Colorado. I wasn't even in Seattle yet. That's how green I was. That's how fucking green I was. 
I wasn't even featuring yet. She had hope and prayer. That's all you had. And I ran over there, ate a bag of dicks, and I remember walking out of there, and nobody would make eye contact. The worst. And you always know when you know nobody. you didn't do well at a black club, you yeah. don't get paid. No, there was not. They weren't going to pay me. They just stopped talking to me. <laughs> like, if I have a good set, boom, I get yeah. paid. If I don't have a good set, no, no, it was a showcase. No money. There was no money involved at all. This is me. I'm in town. I'm a feature act. I like to showcase because I know you have two clubs. Yeah, come on by, brother. You know, okay. I figured I go down there, do 20, and they book you. That's two weeks of work. Who cares if it's a black club? I didn't give a fuck. I'm just looking to fucking work. I was running. I was running. So I went in there and just ate a bag of dicks. I didn't even go up to the guy and said, I'll call you Monday. I know what time it was. Yeah. I can't be that stupid. I drove back to Joey's and had another bag of dicks, and that was the end of that night. Oh. From 10th Planet Kush, it drains the lactic motherfucking ass. And people won't cop to it. The health specialists say, no, that doesn't happen, Joey. Yes, it fucking does. I got friends in Harvard, bitch. I'm like God Brooks. I got friends in high places, motherfuckers.